Thank you. Well, good afternoon, sisters and brothers. I um, am very honored to be standing here today, um, joined by, by uh, Nancy Hutchinson, the Secretary Treasurer in green. Wave, Nancy. And Irwin Nanda in the pink shirt, who's the Vice President of the Ontario Federation of Labour. And of course, my sisters and brothers behind me, who are my family, and I'll talk about those in a few moments. But I do want to say that, first off, thank you, Pam, for those very kind words of introduction. And I'd be extremely remiss if I did not acknowledge that this certainly was not the work of Sid Ryan. Uh, this was the work of a multitude of people that I want to thank, beginning with the mayor of the city. Uh, I want to say to the mayor in particular that his leadership on this at City Hall also paved the way to make this happen. We all know dealing with City Hall cannot be uh, a pleasant experience at times, um, but it takes some leadership to be able to put a team together and say, we're going to move all these barriers out of the way. And I do want to mention some of the staff because I, I think it's only appropriate that people behind the scenes get some acknowledgement. Um, of course, Pam and all of her staff at City Hall, Nancy McSween, Nedemi Stewart, Leslie Coates, James Dan, Daryl Vassine, and Warren Holston, all from the city, played a part in making this actually happen, moving, as I say, those barriers from architectural barriers to approvals to the donation of the land, this beautiful piece of property that the city donated um, has made this the magnificent uh, event that it is today in this magnificent sculpture. I've got to thank David Peltier and Myris Trutiak and Joan Dixon, of course, from MST Bronze for bringing this to life and actually working very closely with all of us. And I have to mention from the OFL, uh, Sister Sandra Clifford, who basically quarterbacked this on behalf of the OFL with City, with MST Bronze, with the sculptor. She did, uh, did a tremendous job. And if I could just say that my relationship with Jack Layton goes back to the 1980s when he was a bearded, long-haired, red suspendered, black shirt councillor at City Hall holding public hearings into making, making Toronto a nuclear-free zone. <laughs> the interesting part about that story is I worked in the nuclear power plant in Pickering at the time. <laughs> so he was trying to put me out of a job, but I still understood what he was trying to do and went along with, with his vision. And the many different incarnations of Jack Layton down through the years, we all know the White Ribbon campaign where he championed the issue of violence against women long before it became a popular issue. Jack Layton was there for that issue. And I was extremely honoured when Jack asked me would I run for the NDP on his campaign in Oshawa in 2006. I knew back then that Jack Layton was going to be a superstar in this, in this province and in this country. In Oshawa at the time, of course, the NDP had been dead on its back for many years. And Jack Layton appeared one evening at an auto fest. Now, if you're from Oshawa, and I know there's many folks here from Oshawa today, we all know how dearly and how much the citizens of Oshawa love their cars. And this auto fest brings out thousands of people, muscle cars of every description, antiques, you can name it. Everybody is preoccupied with this auto fest. Jack Layton stepped onto that street and he was immediately mobbed. And this was back in 2006, not long after he won the leadership of the NDP. And yet, you could see that this man was able to touch the mind and the heart and the souls of working class Canadians. And you could see that he was going to be a force to be reckoned with in the House of Parliament. And we knew from his credentials that he had the intestinal fortitude to be able to fight for a different way of doing politics, a respectful way of respecting each other, even though we may have our differences we got to respect each other in the course of conducting the body politic. And Jack Layton brought a whole new vision to the House of Parliament, the same vision that he had when he sat as a councillor with the Mayor of Toronto in the City of Toronto. So my friends, Jack Layton, in the early years, you could see that this was going to be a man to be reckoned with. And I, I just want to finish my remarks by saying how closely associated Jack Layton was and how embedded he was into the mindset of the labor movement. And he was that way because he simply believed 
He believed in raising people out of poverty, as we heard from the brother from the islands a few moments ago, where Jack actually lived for a while amongst the homeless in this city to demonstrate and to highlight their issues. He believed in moving people out of poverty and into the working class and the middle class of this province and in this country. He spent his years fighting for that vision. And he, his own mother actually said to me this morning that his last speech in Parliament, he, she reminded me, in her opinion, and this is coming from his mother, was the best speech that Jack Layton ever gave. And you know what that speech was about, my friends? It was a filibuster. And the postal workers had been so unfairly treated by the Prime Minister of this country. And Jack Layton stood on his feet, suffering as he was, in tremendous pain, his mother reminded me, and gave a wonderful speech about the role of the labour movement and about the role of workers in this country and trying to meet, move people into the middle class. That was Jack Layton's last speech. And now let me finish on these remarks because we've had a lot of our families introduced here today and I want to introduce my family, my brothers and sisters. And standing behind me here, folks, you will see leaders of the labor movement, ordinary Canadians, working men and women, every single one of them, sometimes demonized in the media, sometimes demonized because their crime is they're trying to make life a little bit better for people, trying to raise people out of poverty. These are the folks that Jack Layton identified with. These are the men and women that came together to say, we ought to do something for Jack Layton. He was there for us. He had air back when we needed Jack Layton. And now we've got his back here today. So thank you very much, sisters and brothers, each and every one of you for stepping up to the plate. And if you don't mind, I'm going to take a moment just to give you a flavor of who made these donations in addition to the hundreds of Canadians who donated everything from a dollar up to $10,000. And let me just say, it's the Amalgamated Transit Union, the National Office, and Local 113, the American Income Life, the Canadian Union of Public Employees, Ontario Vision, and the National Office, and Local 966, the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, the Communication, Energy, and Paper Workers Union, National and Ontario Region, the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario, the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers of Canada, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 353, the Iron Workers 721, Kosky Minsky, the lawyers that deal with our pension plans, the Labourers International Union of North America, the Ontario Provincial District Council, and Local 183, the Ontario Catholic Teachers Association, the Ontario Secondary Teachers Federation, the Ontario Pipe Trades Council, the Ontario Sheet Metal Workers and Roofers Conference, Local 30, the Unfed Building Corporation, the Power Workers Union, United Association of Local 46, United Food and Commercial Workers Union, the Canadian National Office, Local 175633 and 1000A, Union Calling, and that's not the robocall company, that's a union call company, <laughs> and the United Steel Workers National Office, District 3, 5 and 6 and their international union. Without these sisters and brothers, this could never have been a reality today. So please join me and give these folks a very big thanks of gratitude for helping to bring this here today. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, we're delighted on behalf of the OFL and the labor movement to gift this beautiful sculpture to the citizens of Canada and the citizens of Toronto. Thank you very much, my friends, for coming out to watch this unveiling here today. Thank you.